Hi everyone, welcome to Brand Builder Sessions. We are so excited to have you here today. We are live at Keg & Case and we are going to be interviewing uh, Kat Duvik, the co-founder of Social Mixers. Her and her husband, Joel, Joel Eisfelder, manage this brand together and I can't wait to talk with Kat. So Kat, we're gonna talk a little bit about you and the brand and how you got started and I just wanna intro everyone a little bit, give them a little bit of background and then we'll jump in, okay? Sounds good. Okay, so in 2019, you and, you and your husband, Joel, you guys took a weekend retreat to Northern California. It was just me. It was just, it was just, just me. you. You, okay. okay. I love this. Uh, okay, this is so great. On a mountaintop in the Santa Cruz Mountains, you visited a cafe serving unique lattes infused with botanicals like rose, lavender, and turmeric. Okay, tell me about that trip. Let's just start there. There. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just start with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was actually a spiritual retreat. Um, it was one of those things where I was feeling really stuck and I just kind of last minute decided to go and it was in a spiritual community in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Beautiful. Beautiful place. I mean, just like physically beautiful, the energy was beautiful and they had this cafe and it had these fun lattes as you mentioned yeah. and we were all really fixated on the rose latte yeah. and it just kind of became a thing. Like you'd see somebody with one and be like, where did you get that? Yeah. Did you get that right now? Because it's in a spiritual center, so right. the cafe didn't really have normal hours. You just right. had to be there when it was open. And somehow we were talking about it, and I was trying to convince everybody who was with me that they needed to open a cafe in Minneapolis or St. Paul <laughs> that had these lattes so that I could enjoy them because I didn't want to open a cafe. Right. And somehow that evolved to I was going to make the syrup and sell it to all the coffee shops in town. And so did then, you know this like while you were still there or did this yeah. inspiration strike you when you got home? No, this was literally happening like while okay. we were there. Like we were having this conversation and yeah. it evolved from like nobody would open a coffee shop yeah. <laughs> with these <laughs> lattes. Like, no, I don't do that. They're like, yeah, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> and then somehow I was like, well, I'm going to make the syrup yeah. and I'm going to wholesale it. And yeah, and I remember I was even on the plane like thinking about it and kind of brainstorming and dreaming. And I got home and I told my husband, and I remember very clearly he was doing dishes, yes. Joel. And I was like, I'm going to make rose syrup and I'm going to sell it to all the coffee shops. And he was like, okay. <laughs> was he like, that's a nice idea, honey. That's literally, that's literally what happened. <laughs> he was like, okay. And then he went back to doing the dishes. And I was like, it wasn't my first idea yeah. <laughs> for a business. Yeah. But I don't know. It was like a seed was planted. And that was like early, late January, early February of 2019. Okay. And so that was sort of like the planting of the seed. Okay, okay great. So then fast forward six months. While on an Alaskan adventure, I love that you have the travel bug. Obviously. 19 was a good year. This is great. It was a great year for travel. So this is you and Joel. We're on this together. So an Alaskan travel adventure. Um, you guys stumbled upon a local distillery with cocktails so creative you paid a visit every night of your stay. We did, your stay. We did. yes. We were, it was Haynes, Alaska. Okay. And they have the uh, Port Chilkoot Distillery, which is amazing. Yes. And, and I really wish I could buy their spirits here. Unfortunately, they're not available in Minnesota yet. But um, yeah, we were there, like literally we were like, hey, it's us again, uh -huh. <laughs> how's it going? Uh -huh. And yeah, they just had these really fun drinks and it was just, it was really fun. And this beautiful setting too. Great. I mean, there's, there's a theme there with like beautiful setting. I love this. And so in this beautiful setting, this is really where like sort of the official idea of social mixers was born. Yep, a 100%. Um, so after we left Haynes, we um, went out to Skagway and Dai, which is about like a 45 minute ferry ride. And from there, we did four days in the back country. We, we hiked on the Chilkoot Trail and it's your phones aren't gonna work right so it's literally like you and nature and yeah we just started kind of talking about like the future and the things that we wanted to, just really where did we see our lives going we were kind of just doing that sort of audit of like where yeah. we were now and where did we want to go did you guys know that you wanted to run a business together I'm assuming before this you weren't or were you no we weren't um, no you know it kind of came up it just sort of came up organically like you know maybe we should do a business together yeah um, all of our friends have children yeah um, we don't yeah. and you know we were kind of joking about like well our friends are gonna be readily available for about another <laughs> like eh, 10 years you know we gotta got a few more years there so it's yeah. like you know but I also kind of view like my friends that are raising kids it's like they're they're raising these children to help improve the world right right they're raising them and then letting them out in the world to just make it a little better and right. that's their legacy and we're not gonna have that so we were kind of talking wouldn't it be cool to have a business where we could do that a business that would make the world a little better 
and then that can be our contribution. You know, and if it's around after we're gone, awesome. If not, at least we were active in trying to make the world a better place. I, under I understand this so fully. I also do not have children, and so I get this, you know, leaving a legacy with the business, leaving an imprint on the world that has a, a positive impact. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And so, social mixers. So going kind of back to the brand, I know that you're committed to making the best tasting, highest quality product using organic ingredients. Yes. Uh, whenever possible and your syrups are made from a combination of fresh and dried botanicals with no pre-made extracts or concentrates and you only use organic cane sugar. So talk to me a little bit more about your formulations and why using ingredients like this is so important. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's sort of like if we're going to create a product that's going to help make the world a little better, we want to make sure that every level of the supply chain um, is ethical yeah. um, and that we're sourcing, you know, we're sourcing appropriately and, right. and we're feeling good about, you know, who we're buying from and because they're also, I mean, the people that grow the roses are contributing to this product, you know, so it's not just us making it, it's this is really the it's all these levels. For you. Absolutely. And so that is something that is that I'm very passionate about. Um, and, you know, even looking at organic, even if like, I mean, you have some farms where they might not be certified organic because they're so small, um, but they're using those organic methods. And so we wanna make sure that we're supporting them. Of course, any bigger farms, we wanna make sure that they are, you know, doing the proper certifications. Right. And then also too, that they're treating their employees, you know, that, that, it's, that it's fair labor and that in, when we're sourcing ingredients from other countries, fair trade, I mean, those are all just really important things. The things we're looking at, right. um, we're a fairly new company, yeah. so we also know that we're always gonna be changing and growing and trying to do better. So right. we're, we're kind of, you know, we was like, let's get the best we can right now, knowing that that's going to improve. Yeah. So we're always evaluating supply chain. I love that. I mean, I think that that's such an important piece for any business, really, no matter where they're at, whether they're a new brand like you guys, or whether you're an established brand, right? Hopefully we're always kind of re revisiting what that really looks like and making sure. Because I think too, I mean, you know, I've been shopping at, I mean, as long as I've been in Minnesota, I've been shopping at co-ops. Before that, it was the, the health stores in Louisiana where I grew up. And, you know, some of those independent brands, they're not independent anymore. Right. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, per right. se, you know, but it's like their, their methods they have changed right and so I think that's important for us to not get comfortable with that and to to just know we're always gonna have to I love that. we want to strive to be better I love that so okay I want to talk a little bit about the products themselves so tell me about the four products sitting in front of us yep. right now so these are our four flavor our four core flavors okay. um, we've got closest to me ginger lemongrass mm -hmm. hibiscus rosehip lemon rosemary and then I always kind of think of Rose as like my baby <laughs> they're all my baby they're all my children but Rose is my baby <laughs> favorite, right right just because that was the original that yes. was that was the, the latte that was the I was gonna wholesale it and sell it yes. to every coffee shop in town yeah. <laughs> great great okay so we have these four flavors what is there a in terms of sales is there sort of a star or is it pretty mixed evenly on the four it's so interesting. It's so, it's so, especially now that we've been in business a full year, it's fascinating. So overall, ginger lemongrass. Okay. People love it. This is my personal People favorite, love but ginger. I'm a ginger girl. So. See, that's it. You know, yeah. ginger, and, and I feel like there maybe, you know, there just aren't a lot of options for ginger lovers. There's right. a few products out there, but this really like, fills the void right. for people who have that strong love of ginger. Um, and it's bright and it's spicy. And yes, it's, like I said, biased, delicious. Um, Hibiscus rose hip, this is having a moment right now. So in the past month, the sales for this have skyrocketed. Yeah. And I think just with summer, right. people are just in that mood. Um, what we've also found too, is I think a lot of local restaurants are offering hibiscus drinks because people get so excited yeah. when they find this at like the market. Right. And then they're so excited to like try to replicate some of those drinks. Uh -huh. So I think it's a very, it's a very now flavor. Very cool. Um, and the rose hips also just bring like a, a tartness and a, and a sourness to it yeah. that just works so well. Um, lemon rosemary is also, I love this one, especially in more the winter months. Mm -hmm. um, it does work for summer months though. You can add this to iced tea and then add some whiskey if you're feeling, right. Right, feeling it. Um, but just even in iced tea, it's delicious. 
And then Rose is actually our most popular online. Okay. So it's really interesting because even looking at the map, we find that people on the East Coast and the West Coast love our rose, our rose syrup. Not not as much in the Midwest. Not as much in the Midwest. And yeah. I think a lot of it too is exposure. Right. Um, I, we do work out of some farmer's markets and we get people who are like, I've never tried rose before. Right. And so I'm like, you have to try it. <laughs> like you have to, you know, yeah. and we have people who try it and then love it. Yeah. So. So when you guys do events and you sample these, are, do you sample them straight? Do you make drinks for folks? Do you do lattes like when you're at a farmer's market or coffee drinks at all? Yeah. Ah, so right now, we're just now learning about sampling because yeah. last year there wasn't any sampling due right. to COVID. So this is a whole new for, for us. Sampling is opening up again. How fun is that? And actually one nice thing is that because we didn't have to think about it last year, we could focus on other things. Right. So we can be really thoughtful with how we're sampling this year. Yeah. And we're testing different things. Right. Um, we did actually here for, for the launch. Yes, you guys made a brand builder's cocktail. We did. Mocktail, yes. we made a brand builder's mocktail yes. that also tastes great with rum if you have it. Yes. Um, I tried it at home, it was great. Um, we made this brand builder's mocktail and we also did a rosy summer featuring our rose. It was like a rose uh, sparkling lemonade Right. Um, for that. And that we did like five ounce pours and it was great. I mean, yeah. just, you know, it was like the perfect, like just hit of refreshment. Um, we also are experimenting with just kind of watering it down a little bit and just giving people little tastes of it so yes. they can just taste for those that, are, that say, I've never had rose before. So you get like more kind of the pure flavor. Right. And yeah. we don't do just the straight up syrup because we found it so concentrated. Yes. It's such a concentration of flavor, which is what you want when you're putting it in your drink with other things. Right. But it's just, it's a lot for somebody unless yeah. it's, they're really into sugar yeah. too. So it's also very sweet. So good. Okay. So I love this. So you guys are using whole ingredients. You physically peel the ginger, cut the left, like you're doing this. Physically ginger. Yeah. You are like, you are making these products. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is this a labor of love for you? Um, like what? It's a labor of love. Yeah. It's also, I mean, I love, I know as our business goes on, there's going to be the time where I'm not going to be able to make the products and sell the products right. and, you know, do everything else that comes with running the business. But especially right now as it's built, as, as we're building this business and building the foundation, right. I love being able to be in the kitchen. Right. I love, there's, there's just a, a connecting, you know, it, it's a connectedness, connectivity, right. but it's just, yeah, it's just a really nice connection, like where it's like, I'm literally peeling the ginger. And yes, there's some times where I'm like, boy, I really don't want to peel ginger for four hours today. Yeah. Um, so like, like, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. How many different hats you have to wear as a founder, as a new founder, as an entrepreneur, what does, what does your life look like as a founder? Like yeah. walk me through how many, how many different hats you have to wear in a week? How, I, Honestly, I'm trying to figure out the count of the hats. It's a lot of hats. Yeah. Um, I mean, two mornings out of the week is when I do production. Okay. And so those are locked in. Those are my kitchen days. That's when I'm doing production. I think we're about to increase that even more, okay. um, which is exciting. But also when I'm there, you would not, you don't get to focus on the other things of actually like right. running and building the business. Exactly. And so I've tried to be really intentional with how I block out my day. Right. Um, just so that there is making sure that there is time to work on, you know, even if it's doing research or making phone calls, sending emails, making sure that time gets blocked out. Otherwise it's six o'clock. There's really no point in making phone calls at six o'clock. Right. Um, or even to making sure that even if I'm not at the kitchen, I have to place orders for our sourcing and right. making sure that we have ingredients because that's happened before where I'm like, I'm going to make this and I'm like, oh, I don't have anything I need. Uh huh. So. And, and so you are having to do all the sales, right? Is that right? So that's sort of all the emailing, figuring out what accounts you might want to go after. You have to do all the marketing. I know that you guys actually just are going through a label update, right? Yes. Like that's a new package update. So you had to kind of be the marketing person. Eight? Yes, yeah. we are um, and about to update our labels. And in fact, that is um, really a big step for us because with the new labels, we're going to have, you know, it's, it sounds so silly. It's such a little, it sounds, it's probably such a little thing to most people, yeah. but UPCs and nutritional panels. But those are going to allow us to do far more wholesale. So it's really a big step for us. It's a huge step. But just the process of getting those, you know, we didn't, I don't have a background in this. My background's right. in arts management and digital marketing. So it's like <laughs> trying to, like, how do you get UPCs? Google. 
Yes. Um, Google has been my best friend. Yeah. 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 So you guys have the, these new labels coming out pretty soon. I also know that you have a couple new flavors coming out soon, right? We do. Yes. We're finally ready to expand. Um, we've got two new flavors coming out. Lime, coriander. Ooh. Yes. Mojitos margaritas, yeah. um, also some incredible mocktails yeah. um, with those, with that flavor, and then elderflower thyme. Oh my God, it's beautiful. I always kind of have images in my head when I think about these, like, so like Rose, it's always, I'm always going to be back in Santa Cruz, you know, right. in the Santa Cruz mountains, but I feel like elderflower thyme, I just think of like a meadow, <laughs> like a beautiful, beautiful meadow, oh and then there's like elderflower, you know, the shrub, it's like a shrubby plant, you know, just along like a creek and... Yeah, that's the image that always pops in my head. I, if you, know, so you say that, I would love to see you guys do like a whole travel storyboard of like each flavor. Out in the wild. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be really fun. That would be very fun. Yeah. And I'd have to go travel. Because there's some places where I haven't been where it's like natively grown. Right. So I guess I'd have to start, yeah, get on a plane again. We can do that now. Yeah, we can. We can do that Yay. now. I mean, so that actually, plane again. We can do that now. Yeah, we can. We can do that Yay. now. I mean, so that actually makes I have miles right. <laughs> and e-credits. Right. That you guys launched this business during a pandemic. We did. When, when, you know, the country was mostly shut down. What was that experience like? You know, it's interesting. Um, we don't have anything to compare it to. Right. So on one hand, it was kind of a blessing because we didn't like just spend, I mean, we, we, we talked to people, we've met people who launched their businesses in 2019. Right. And we're like, this is where I'm going. And then they had to pivot. Yeah. And for us, we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what we were doing. Right. So it was like, okay, this is how we're doing it. Cool. This is, this is the only reality, the only path. Right. Yeah. And, as, and as I mentioned earlier too, like with the sampling, it, it allowed us, there were certain things we couldn't do, which allowed us to focus more energy on other things that we yeah. probably wouldn't have because we would have been trying to figure out, okay, how do we do sampling? And, and it, I mean, just, I mean, one example is, you know, we launched the business, things are going good. I left my full-time job to focus full-time full on, this, on this business. And I immediately, I mean, literally I left my job the next week, I landed three wholesale accounts. I was like, this is great. And then I ran out of bottles. I had ordered bottles three months before. I just hadn't gotten them because COVID. It was just a COVID-related supply issue. Right. And so I was on the phone with the packaging company. And yeah, what, what did you do? How did you maneuver that? A lot of phone calls. Yeah. Um, and it was funny because the last time I talked to them, they said, we're not lying to you. You really are first in line. They were like, it's going to get off the truck and it's going to go to you. And I was like, okay. But it also forced me to find other suppliers, right. which was great because you know early on it was like, okay, this supplier looks good. Let's go with it. And so now I've got more, which is if something happens, but I even, like found, a, yeah. I even found another one that I think as we expand that we're going to be able to work with longer term too, yeah. which is, which is great. And I probably would, I wouldn't have felt forced to do that research because right. I was focusing also on finding caps and getting right. the labels made. And, and Right. Do you think that you are going to want to move at some point? I know we talked about this a little bit already, but do you think you're going to want to move to a co-manufacturer at some point to do this for you? Or do you see bringing others onto your team who will still like make it? Do you know, I think about this all the time. Yeah. This is this is like the big question. I because I feel like it's one of those it's one of those decisions that I want to make sure I have all the research right. down before we make it. And so I'm looking at both right now. Okay. I'm genuinely looking at both is what would be the better fit for us and for the long term growth right. of our company is working with a co-manufacturer or would it be building out a small space right. and hiring a staff and you know, and it's so interesting because I, I attend every webinar I can find yeah. and experts will say, don't even, I, I was on one last week, they said, don't even think about a co-manufacturer until you're at a million in sales. Yeah. And then somebody else says, you're crazy if you want to do your own manufacturing. And it's like, well, what are we what supposed do we to do, do before we get to that one million in right. sales? You know, do we do the small? And so that's kind of what I'm doing the research on now is to see what is going to be better. And it might even be like an interim it might even, you know, be we might manufacture some, we might outsource some. Yeah. I think that it is actually a real challenge for most new brands because a lot of co-packers, co-manufacturers have such high minimums right. 
that you might not have enough volume yet or to do a full production run feels like, oh my God, this is going to wipe out my budget, right? Right. And so I think we do actually have a real need in the industry for some more co-packers who will do smaller runs and really specialize in new brands yeah. to deal with exactly what you're talking about. I think so. And I think too, it's finding the co-manufacturer that will also use some of the similar processes. Like we know right. if we outsource, there's probably going to be something we're going to have to give, yeah. but you know, I love the fact that we start with whole ingredients right. and we use, I, I, you'd mentioned it before, we use a mix of dried and fresh yeah. and it really is based on what is going to have the best product. So tell me about like what has fresh, what has dry, what is, and how do you make that decision? Yeah, so a lot of it is, some of it is due to accessibility of okay. the product. Um, and some of it is due to um, the taste and the vitality. Yeah. You know, with ginger, dry ginger and fresh ginger, totally different. Both are fantastic. Right. I mean, both are absolutely lovely, but for the syrup, I love the fresh ginger. I think there's just a certain, there's a, it's got the spiciness, but then there's also like a brightness, and it's yeah, almost a like a vibrancy to it. Vibrancy. That was it's so funny. I was about to say vitality, yes. right? A vibrancy yeah. where I feel like you can taste that yeah. in the drink. Um, we do use dried flowers, and a lot of that is just because getting fresh at the levels we need right now, right. it's so hard. Yeah. And you know, I initially I had this vision of like I'm gonna wildcraft every, you know, yeah. I'm just gonna wildcraft. I'm just gonna grow a bunch of roses in the backyard, and isn't this gonna be amazing? Right. But I also don't want to like decimate the rose population because I'm picking every single right. petal and hip, right? right? Well, because you have this commitment to sustainability and really right. like what's best for the planet, and so I think that that's good that you're thinking. thinking about and I'm a that. strong believer in. I mean, I, I grow things in my backyard for personal use. Yeah. Um, my husband and I, Joel, have an agreement where before he mows the lawn, he tells me. <laughs> and then I run around with a little basket. The neighbors probably think I'm insane, you know, and I'm picking like all the dandelions. And yeah, you that's really a, do this? I do this. I oh, love especially violet this. season. Violet season is like, because I'll make like a shrub and I'll make like a honey. And usually I can get a couple little things out of it. Yeah. But I was harvesting St. John's wort, and that's what I've been harvesting all week. And it always leaves some for the pollinators, right? It's not, because it's not always about us. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I feel like if so I'm great. if I'm growing rose for the business, then it's it just I don't know. It makes that more challenging. Yeah. So so we have a good resource um, where we get it. It's organic, um, and it's a company that's known for good. They have they have really high standards in sourcing. You have some other new products coming out soon. I know that you're working on right. Yes. That is not just an extension of. The mixes. It's something new. It's a new category. It is a new category. Um, we're going to be coming out with some shrubs, which are drinking vinegars. Oh my god! And they're so good, and they're so fun, and they're great in cocktails. But they're also, I mean, and our syrups are excellent in mocktails too. But these make really fun, complex mocktails. Tell today. us what. Okay, some people might hear like a shrub, and they might go, "What the yeah, heck do you mean?" And you like, push, yes. Right. So what if you is, Google shrub, yes. you're gonna you're gonna get nurseries. Right. Um, I think Bachman's is always like number one whenever <laughs> like I Google shrub. Um, so it's also known as drinking vinegars. Okay. And it's an old fruit preservation technique. So back in the day, you would you would have the harvest. There's no freezer or right. a refrigerator, and so you got to eat it when the fruit when it was fresh, and then there was you wanted to find a way to preserve it. And so they would preserve it essentially with vinegar. Right. And then they would take that it, and then add a sweetener to it. So now we use cane sugar. Then they were probably using honey. Right. Or, or like maple syrup. Yeah. Um, but, um, and this is when I say then, thinking more like, like US colonial times, right. so like 1700s. Yeah. And it was a technique that, you know, eventually went out of fashion because people would just pick fruit and put it in the refrigerator. Yes. <laughs> or they would freeze it. Um, but it kind of came in a fashion the past, probably about the past like, you know, like 20, 10 years. And did it come years? back kind of as a, as a way for a cocktail mix or something, or did it come back for something else? It came out through the bars. Okay. You know, which is, it's kind of funny because yeah. I love like, I, I actually love cocktail history. I think it's so yeah. much fun, like so many drinks that, I mean, the fact that bars were originally known as coffee houses, but they were also like pharmacies. I mean, right. the, the first cocktail in North America came from a pharmacist. So the Sazerac, like, I, I, so I think that's really fun. And so, what a yeah. fun fact. so here you've got like the shrub, this drink that kind of, you know, just fell out of favor. And, yeah. and also too, it, people weren't drinking a lot of sour. You know, we, we moved towards the sweet. Yes. And so then in the past like 10, 20 years, it's like, of course it's fitting that the bars rediscover it. And right. it's becoming more common. And I think too, as um, thanks to like kombucha, 
yes. you know, it, it, it's gained so much popularity in mainstream. People are getting excited about sour again. About a different palette. Yeah. Yeah. But it is. It's sour, but it's also sweet. Right. It's just the best of both worlds. And we're mixing it with reusing fresh fruit for those and then also using some botanicals, some herbs to just give it some dimension. Yeah. Yeah. But it is. It's sour, but it's also sweet. Right. It's just the best of both worlds. And we're mixing it with reusing fresh fruit for those and then also using some botanicals, some herbs to just give it some dimension. And when are those gonna be available? We're hoping that they'll be available within the summer. Okay. That, that's, that's probably the best thing to say now, <laughs> this summer. Right now we're okay. working on like the nutritional panels, yep. and so we're working on all that extra stuff that goes into the label. Uh, we've got the formulas down. How many different flavors will there be in the shop line? We're definitely gonna have two to start. Yeah. Um, there's a third one that I'm working on at the moment that if I once I perfect it, and I think, I think it's gonna be good. So I think we're likely gonna have two hopefully three, yeah. um, and then we're probably gonna stick with those, see how they do, right. um, especially from like a sales perspective. Right. Um, there's already a couple shrub companies out there, and because it's a kind of a, still sort of a, like unknown, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not in the mainstream yeah. yet, so we just wanna see how those do. Yeah. And then long term, we're also working on uh, offering some bitters. Oh, I'm so happy to hear this. And that's like, I mean, I love, I love playing with plants. I've been making tinctures for years. I studied with an herbalist a couple of years ago. And so the idea of making formulas that taste really good, but that also have some functional properties, um, that's, that's the dream. That's the dream. Um, but there are some legal aspects that we have to, yeah. there's a lot of legal aspects we have to go through because of, you know, there's different ways that you can um, make bitters, yeah. but the way that we're looking at it is alcohol is just, it's a good solvent um, to be able to pull all of the characteristics from the plant. Yes. And so, and for that, they- Not really, any good herbalist is gonna tell you that like alcohol solvents is the way to go. Yes. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. there's other ways too, and so I'm also kind of playing with those, yeah. which is glycerin, because yep. I also like the idea of it's really important that we create products that are accessible yes. to all. So to have an alcohol-free option. To have an alcohol. So we might have like yeah, a bitter that is yeah. alcohol-free that people can use. Right. You know, when you use bitters, it's just a few drops. But right. there's some folks that you know, whatever for whatever reason, you will know, not will, will not touch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we want to make sure that we've got yeah. opportunities for them. Oh, this, this is exciting. I love that you have such this this passion for herbalism is coming through in your products. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny. I. I kind of struggle sometimes because I think about, you know, should I be, should it be a functional line? You know, should it be all these? But it's almost like the medicine with these is like, it's the medicine of like connection. It's the medicine of creativity. So there's a healing aspect, even if it's not like, it doesn't say like, this will help your heart, you know, but the rose syrup will help your, it'll expand. It'll expand uh, okay, heart. say this again. It's yeah. the medicine of, I think it's the medicine of creativity and connection. Yeah. You know, because it, it is, and that's why we went with the name Social Mixers. And I mean, for the record, we picked the name in August of 2019. <laughs> that was before social distancing became a thing. And when that happened, I was like, oh my gosh. Which might have been like good for your brand, Social right? distancing, like, right. Yeah. Well, or last summer I was like, our first market, I was nervous. I was like, right. what if people yell at us and right. think that we're trying to convince people to like, you know, not social distance. So it was like, hope they know. But no one did. Everyone, yes, everyone's been very positive yeah. about it. But it is, it's about, it's connection. And I think especially the past year, I mean, I think we all learned how important, you know, connection is. Just you and I being able to sit at a table. It's amazing. Without masks right. and being able to see each other and look at each other. I mean, that's yeah, and incredible. Connect, face -face. And connect. Yeah. I mean, Zoom was Great, and Zoom right. was, it was, it, it was, served a massive purpose. Oh, it served a massive yeah. purpose. I mean, it allowed me to see my family on Christmas Day. It allowed me to attend my brother and his wife's baby shower. But there's yeah. really no right. substitution for this, and your brand is really built around this principle of bringing people together. Bringing people together, and I think also to the, the idea of creativity. Yeah. Um, as adults, you know, we're not playing like, like we, we don't have art class, we right. don't have art time. Um, I think we all should. Um, and I think some people do, but not, but most people don't have right. like a designated time to just be creative. And so I think that so many of us get that, that desire for creativity out in the kitchen, right? So it's like people cook and they're letting that kind of creativity move through them. And so for us, it's like the kitchen or the bar. And so, yeah. and I meet people at the market and they're like, I don't, I don't know what to make. And so I'm like, 
a little bit of this yeah. and like a little squeeze of lemon and you know and it allows them to then I like to give people base recipes so that yeah. they can then put their a with it a little it. put their own skin play. play yeah, yeah. Play. and create and create something that's unique to them and an expression and right. So Kat, you guys are really at a place where you're ready to really kind of turn and face the market in a bigger way, right? And I know that that's part of the reason that you join Brand Builders is to really kind of get to this place and give you guys a platform to launch your brand. So what does that look like? What comes next in terms of where do you sell? Where do you want to sell? And then what's the long-term vision for social mixers? I think immediate, the kind of the immediate need is really formulating an our retail strategy. Yes. I saw your Instagram post yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, so, and you were talking about, you know, the importance of having a really strong and thoughtful retail strategy right. and that it's not just, I want to get into this chain or I want to get into that's this. That's right. And that's really where we are immediately is like, okay, what is phase one? And so phase one for us is we are looking at kind of smaller distributors um, because we are a little tiny baby company yep. um, and we know we're not we know we're not ready for those big accounts. Yep. We don't have the production capabilities um, and we have a lot of lessons to learn. You want to be scalable, like where scalable. meet where you're at right now with yeah. room to grow. Uh, and so we're, we are looking at some smaller distributors. We're actually really close to signing with a small uh, liquor distributor, Amazing. which is really exciting. Yeah. And it's also, you know, a very different world than I think grocery distributors. Yeah. And so what's nice is that we get to touch both of these. And do you want both? Do you want to play in both worlds? worlds? You know, I think for us, um, we are such a, we're a specialty product. Yeah. Uh, you know, when people see our syrups um, at the markets or when they see our syrups here, they're thinking of the fun things that they can make. They're in that mode. Right. I, I am curious, and I, I don't know the answer yet. That's why actually we're here yeah. doing Brand Builders, is if they're, if they're on the shelf in a grocery store, would people feel that same way? Or would they be like, okay, I already have my list. I already have these other things I need to get. Right. This would be more of an impulse buy. Yeah. And so we are looking at more liquor. Um, or some of the larger stores that have liquors. Liquors, And then we're also looking at specialty retail. I think specialty gourmet would be like a great kind of niche for you guys, for sure. I think so, because I think too, it's, um, it's, obviously we want people to buy this every week. We want it to be part of their every day. And we have customers that, I mean, one of them is my mother-in-law, but who like put, you know, the syrups in their water every day and all day. And they're regular buyers. But I think that initially for people to be introduced to it, it's going to be in that specialty gourmet, yeah. in liquor, in that more, yeah, that more specialty. Because right. I think they're also too, when people are shopping, I don't know, it's just, there's a certain frame of mind. Right. They might be in. So if you had to kind of like distill down into two sentences, what is, what's the vision for this company? Where, what do you want this to be? Yeah. We want to be the go-to company for, I like to call it cocktail accoutrement. You know, that's, that's kind of the yeah. word I like to use is, you know, we're like the, the drink accessories brand, but also two for mocktails. Yes. So, you know, it, and I know that those are two different worlds, but I think that, again, it's creativity, it's connection. And so they both sit sure. in that. Um, but we want to, with especially with our shrubs, with adding bitters. And there's other products, too, that are kind of on the dream board. Yeah. Um, we're not ready to announce. Like, we're not, we're not officially moving down the path. But I do think I want to expand this. I think with a name like this and sort of the mission that you have around this creativity and connection, there is a lot that you can do. I mean, I heard you define your why very clearly. And when that's clear, you've got a lot of mobility within a brand to make it what you want it to be. Yeah. Congratulations, Kat. Yeah. Thank you. I am a personal fan and I'm so excited to have you here and a part of the market and I cannot wait to see your products out on shelf. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. I mean, we we have just felt so blessed to be part of Brand Builders. I mean, you know, when we first reached out, especially being such a young brand, yeah. you know, it's like she might tell us like, no, you're not ready, you know, but yeah. we just really appreciate all of the, the wisdom that you share, the insight that you share, and that you were so open to having us be part of this cohort. It's a dream. It's been great. It's a dream for us, too. I mean, just being able to see, especially next to the mushroom chamber, I mean, there's nothing cooler. There is something about seeing your products on shelf for the first time in a big, impactful way, right? It really is. It's a good feeling. feeling. Oh, it's a great feeling. Oh, my gosh. And I love to being able to tell people, go to Keg and Case, walk in the door, and you'll see straight ahead. It's right there. there. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Kat, thank you so much for joining us today. 
So we just finished you guys with Kat Duvik, the co-founder of Social Mixers. And join us next time for our interview with Kickled Mary. We'll see you in our next Brand Builder sessions.